Then we're going to go look for patterns across the interviews, patterns around what we call our five rings of buying insight. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then that's how we build the persona. We pull out verbatim quotes. We'd want you to pull out quotes from this interview and that bring color to these points. Welcome to the Schweike Media Expert webinar series where we team up with leading marketing and publishing experts to provide you with tips and best practices to help you grow your business and stay on the cutting edge. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. I'm here today with Adele Rivella, who is the CEO of Buyer Persona Institute and author of Buyer Personas, How to Gain Insight into Your Customers' Expectations, Align Your Marketing Strategies, and Win More Business. And this was recently named a top five business book by Fortune Magazine. Adele's unique perspective derives from decades of experience as a sales and marketing executive, trainer, researcher, and entrepreneur. And today, we are going to have Adele, who is uh, literally the foremost expert on developing buyer personas, conduct a mock interview with myself on our buying decision for our SEO planning and management and keyword tool that uh, we ended up going forward with. And uh, Della has uh, taught us all a lot um, through her trainings and her the book she wrote and podcast interviews with us and everybody else she's done. Ton this taught us a ton about buyer personas and what to do with them and how to develop them. But today we are here to um, – have her uh, listen to her in action and see how she conducts these interviews. So to actually put all this learning and everything, uh, you know, right right here in front of us to to see how she actually how the how the expert does it. So Adele, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing great, David. Thanks for so so much for asking me to to do this. It, it, my favorite thing in the whole world is to interview people about buying decisions and. Uh, I learn so much from every interview I conduct, so I'm uh, very excited about inter- this interview and uh, being able to find out how you went about a real buying decision and, and also being able to demonstrate. Because people, you know, so many people say to me, you know, what is what are the questions you ask? Where is the script mm-hmm. for the interview? And I always say, you know, it's unscripted. It's really about just getting the buyer's story. But here we are. We get to, to get your real story, and I get to demonstrate how it works even though – you don't have an, a script to go from. Yeah, and, and that's the whole thing. And, and those are the same questions I had, uh, you know, and I had for you when we first talked about sure. it. And it's it's definitely normal. It's everybody's question. Send me the script and I'll do the interview. And I'm like, no, 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 no <laughs> yeah. script. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think, I think if anything, if I remember from your book that I actually read twice, um, is I think you have the initial, you know, opening, and then after that, it's all. But we'll, we'll see for ourselves. So um, let's let's hit, hit hit the ground running here, and uh, I'm ready to try to answer the best I can. <laughs> okay, David. Well, first of all, I really want to thank you for taking the time to share your story with us, and I, I'm hoping you'll just take me back to the day. When you first decided that now was the time to buy an SEO and keyword research tool, and just tell me what happened. What what was what was going on at the moment that you decided that was a priority for you? Hmm. Well, I guess it's hard to dis- to, to decide. You know exactly the exact time. Uh, as we were, you know, learning more and more and more about you know our trade and everything, we we obviously know that uh we had to have a keyword focus and um so i i can't remember exactly the time but mm-hmm. there it was through you know reading lots of blogs and watching webinars and and um you know starting you know realizing that you know we have to do this if we're going to be doing our our work correctly for for our clients you know being a marketing agency and um needing to um to you know, incorporate all the SEO benefits that go along with, you know, a content marketing strategy. We, uh, we realized we needed, well, I guess we realized we needed one pretty much right away, uh, you know, as we were getting going, but that was through continuously just reading blogs and, and, you know, watching how other experts do stuff and having them talk about it. So it wasn't like an exact moment in time, but it was more of a, you know, overall, you know, kind of morphed into that. Sure. Sure, I understand. So, um, how long ago was did this start? Did you start the search for this tool? I'd say, uh, well, the exact search, well, the con- 
knowing that we needed it was, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, right when we were starting our firm and then um, making a decision was, you know, shortly after that. Um, and then are, are you asking like the research that we did or? Um, yeah, so when you actually said, okay, now we're going to go out and do research and find one and buy okay. one, was, was that a couple of years ago, right when you started the agency or was it more recent? No, it was it was um, closer to you know, right when we started everything, and um, it, what we ended up doing, you know, I, I, I became aware of the companies that we needed mainly, I, I, I guess through through content, um, you know, you know, see, reading a bunch of different, you know, we we started to narrow down our choices based on who we who we saw the most of, really. Um, I guess that there probably are bunches and bunches of other, you know, good good tools, but we ended up narrowing it down to um, SEO Moz, SEM Rush, and uh, Ahrefs. Um, and then, then, you know, did do some, you know, outreach to other SEO experts and, you know, get their take on what they liked and what they wanted. And then we ended up um, setting up demos uh, with each with, with the, uh, each of those companies that we ended up uh, narrowing down to. But again, I, I you know, it's kind of hard to know exactly what marketing played yeah. in the psychology yeah. of my mind. But I, I know that uh, the ones that I felt most comfortable with um, were the ones that were putting out lots of good information and that I learned from in the past. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So, so just to clarify that that sort of moment when you decided to buy, it sounds like from the time you started your agency, you knew this was a requirement. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? I mean, it wasn't yes. like we're going to start an agency and we're going to wait a couple of years. The real event that triggered this was just starting your agency. You did you so you saw this then as one of the core tools for your agency. Would that be correct? Uh, yes. Okay. It's not the most expensive, but um, it's it's probably one of the most core tools. Yes. Okay. Especially okay. especially as um, less and less information started coming from um, Google Analytics and the information they quote unquote hide. I don't know if um, I, I'm guessing that's because they want you to get involved with AdWords. I guess, but but more less and less information was coming from you know, the Google and they were, you know, you needed, um, you needed a third party app or a third party tool to really delve in. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's really great. Well, thank you. So then when you started your agency and you said, Hey, I know we've got to have a tool like this. Um, tell me what you did first to even think about, I mean, you mentioned three companies that you evaluated. I'd like to get you to kind of take me slowly through that, that process where you said, okay, we, we're starting our agency. We've got to go look for the best SEO and keyword research tool in the market. Did you feel like you already knew the best tools, or did you have to go do some research about that? No, no, not at I wouldn't say we knew at all. I, I was partial to one um, because of just the grand amount of information that I've learned over the years. Um, so I probably started making this buying decision four or five years ago without knowing it. But what we did is we did ask around to other people. We did um, just a bunch of online research, you know, digging into the individual tools themselves. And, and this, I say digging in, uh, looking at the, you know, the product videos online and looking at the um, different features um, that they each had and and trying to align that with you know the kind of clients you know trying to we work with you know smaller and larger clients so we need we definitely needed one that was you know catered to local SEO as well um and uh, some of them did and some of them you know ha had a little bit more emphasis on that so that was that was um part of um ended up being part of our buying decision was the ones that satisfied um mm -hmm. You know, big, big, and then also local, um, lo local, inf you know, local information, local parts of the tool. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Good. So, so when you when you you know you mentioned that you knew one one firm that you were pretty excited about already. When you started asking around to other people, did they concur? or Did they give you some different perspective on firms that you hadn't thought of? 
Yeah, they, they definitely did. I think that's where AHRS or AA refs or however you say it um, came into the picture. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it seemed like um, a lot of, you know, super duper um, SEO, you know, re- re- super technical people, you know, seemed to like that tool uh, a lot. Um, so that came into the picture. So we, we were checking that that out as well as some of the ones that I, I've um, kind of escaped me. Um, but some, you know, even lesser expensive tools, I guess, we started to look at. But we really wanted a all-in-one solution in the sense that helps us with our, our keyword research, um, helps us with the tracking of the keywords, helping give advice on what to do, um, and, and one that was, you know, fairly obtainable to use. Uh, so, some of them um, seem to gush a ton of information at you, um, and, and it was, you know, could be a little, mm. little overwhelming and feeling like, hey, this is all great, but we're not going to be... You know, it, you know, it, it seems like it might be a little bit more difficult to to really navigate and 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 you know utilize all this great information that they're saying they can provide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, that was, I get it. Yeah. So when you um, when you did your, I mean, on when you heard about these firms, did you go online then to check them out? Is that was that the next step, or did you do something else? Yeah, yeah, online, um, you know, reviews, you know, and then that that obviously goes down a rabbit hole when you start to you probably navigate towards other um, um, chat boards and stuff like that. And, you know, that, that just kind of is the rabbit hole you go down when you're starting to look at, at stuff and seeing what Rabbit hole? What does that mean? <laughs> you know, when you go down one and then you just keep going and going and going and going. So, we, you know, we probably ended up getting to – to pages that wouldn't show up on the SERPs and maybe, you know, 450 pages deep. But, you know, you end up, um, you know, clicking on one thing and reading another and reading another and reading another and going to review sites and then other stuff would pop up. And so, yeah, we did a a lot of online research. And it's not even like that expensive of, of a tool, but that wasn't as concerning to me. You know, it needed to be, you know, reasonable in the price. But it was knowing that, um, a ton of time is going to be spent here, so we need to make sure that that we're utilizing our time because it wasn't necessarily the cost. Um, I mean, obviously, it would have been a factor if one was way more expensive than the other. But seeing that they all were, you know, genuinely around the same, it was more of making sure that we're going to get the most bang for our buck in the in the sense of time from our staff using it. Sure, I know, I get it, yeah. So when when you sort of like talked around to people and looked at these reviews and looked at these the, done your online research, at that point do you do you remember how many companies actually looked interesting to you? Were there There was about three to five. Um it okay. was purchase was made a bit ago, so but I, I know we ended up at three and I think that there was about five or six that um and when you start Googling, you know, best of these tools or this first that or da 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 all that, you know, other tools do come into the picture that that you take a look at. So, but we ended up, and as you know, as a business owner, I mean, you know, you're you have to do so much. You got to work for your clients. You got to work on your own company. Mm-hmm. You gotta, it's just you got to do that. So, you know, setting up sales calls, um, it's kind of a big deal, um, just because we have our just so much other stuff going on. So I didn't want to line up like 10 or 12, you know, demos. So Mm -hmm. we ended up settling in about three demos that we ended up doing. And we, you know, you know, you know, did an outreach to those companies to set those up. So once we did all of our research, decided on, you know, you know, and and this decision was made uh, directly with my COO because he's going to be using it the most. So I had, you know, I definitely assigned him to, um, uh, look and in, in do some pre-trials with each one and, and, and look into them yourself because you're going to be using this. I, I did a, a bit of the upfront work and narrowed, narrowed it down, but then at that point I had to get my team involved because they're going to be using it and they need to be comfortable with it, and, and I had to get their input as well. So was, was your team then out doing this online research before you chose the three for the demos, or was did that come out? No, I, narr- I narrowed it down and then uh, mm-hmm. then had them look into the final few choices. Okay. 
And so, David, and I realize, and ideally we would be doing this interview within six months to a year of the purchase. Mm-hmm. So this is a little, you know, we're, we're doing this interview as, as for, the, for the benefit of your audi- audience today and just want them to know that um, because uh, this isn't as recent, we aren't getting some mm-hmm. of the specifics because it's hard for you to recall that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we, we, in a real study, we would never interview anyone who for whom the purchase was a couple of years ago. But let's, yeah. let's, let's go to those three companies that you chose to demo with. I'm wondering if you can recall what it was about those three companies that had you say, these are the only three we're going to demo with. I mean, what was sort of missing about the others that had them get left out at that stage? You know, I think it was definitely what, what they displayed on their websites. There's some that you know we we had some good, um, you know, they, they they were they were up there and the you know suggestions from you know everything that we ended up narrowing down to. But some of them just didn't really um, have as have as good a demos online that that intrigued us enough that really felt it was all encompassing. Some of them felt a little light on. Um, so it was definitely. Um, I definitely remember looking into all their websites, and I was like, okay, these are, you know, these are the hot, and, and the same ones kept coming up, and and all the, and all the, you know, all all the ratings. So, it, you know, it was able to kind of get some confidence that way. But I, I definitely remember some some of the, you know, on page, uh, their homepage and their demos. You know, I keep saying demos, but I don't mean that. I mean like the you know, product, you know, you know, minute or two video that, that shows how everything works, uh, okay. weren't as impressive as, as some of these others. Um, and, uh, I, I remember definitely looking into that and just, you know, thinking that that's just a little bit too light. And some of them were very inexpensive tools, but I, I will say that, you know, price yourself accordingly. And that doesn't mean, uh, be below the competition. It means be around the right price. Cause so I, you know, definitely some of them that were so cheap, you know, just, my brain triggers as well. That's probably um, a lesser effective tool, um, and I know that's not fair to the company if they got their <laughs> they found a way to do it super cheap and as effective. But it, it definitely um, kind of you know raises an eyebrow if if it's not in line with you know all the other you know really good exactly, tools that, yeah. that are um, that are you know similarly priced. So the price was sometimes a red flag, but you, I'm also interested because you mentioned a little bit ago that, you know, you didn't you didn't want this tool to be gushing a ton of information at you and it made it seem mm-hmm. too complicated. Did are, With these videos, was it the opposite of that? Did it look like they were just too simplistic and wouldn't give you enough information? Can you tell me a little bit more about, and again, recognizing it's been a little too long since this buying decision, but... Is there anything about those demos that you can remember that would contrast them with the demo, with the videos, better term, with the videos that you did like? Um, I, well, I will say not all of them had the walkthroughs as well. Um, and the ones that did were obviously, okay, this is definitely what we're going for. Um, oh man, that's a really good question. And, um, yeah. And I wish I, I, that's okay. Because we're mainly trying to demonstrate that. that we're just mainly trying to demo the what a buyer persona interview looks like right now. Mm-hmm. And what I want to emphasize for the people that are listening to this interview is that this is the kind of detail that is just mm-hmm. gold for us as yeah. marketers, right? Which is what were people looking for on our website? What did they hope to find? What did they get? What didn't they get? And you can get this not only for your own solution but for your competitors. So we'll move on. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I, I will say again, you know, the ones that um, that that spoke to what I was looking for, part of what I was looking for, the the local emphasis, and okay. you know, at least the content around that, and then as well as in the you know on their website, you know, mentioning that that that's also what it was good for, is, was a big thing that intrigued me, and mm-hmm. um, I, I and I obviously I don't think I can be the can can I mention the one that we. Ended up sure, choosing, you or can, you can mention it. Yeah, sure. we, we I obviously wasn't the only person thinking this way. Uh, we ended up going with SEO Moz, um, mm-hmm. and, and I will say they they actually had they had a head start just because I really watch um, Rand Fishkin stuff all the time, mm-hmm. and I I really just felt like I even told my team I was like I think and, and 
I was like, I think we're going to go with this one, but we still were looking with the other ones. I was like, I just learned so much from this guy. I feel like I owe it to him. And, um, but, uh, another tool did take the lead for a little bit. Uh, we okay. almost went with a- SEM rush, um, because it was just, uh, it's a very great, it's a, the, all these tools we mentioned are all great tools, but, um, we, we almost went with SEM rush and, and, you know, even had a couple calls with their sales team and, and almost went with them. But, um, I, I will say when they did their demo, it, it was, it it could be a little overwhelming. You know, there's so many things you can do with it, but I felt like if they would have tailored it a little bit more to exactly kind of what I was looking for in, in, in the local stuff, you know, it, we would have maybe gone with them. But um, like I said, I don't think I'm the only person that, that had had this need because Moz ended up starting at Moz Local, um, which is, you know, a tie-in to it. So they, they obviously have probably listened to, you know, lots of customer feedback and they ended up going, you know, a, you know adding that product line in, which um, which ended up kind of being the kicker for us was, okay, you know, you have SEO Moz that we got to use, but then we also could tie in Moz Local and it felt comfortable going with a, a company that we could accomplish, um, you know, both things with. So there were three demos. What was, how did the third company get included? Uh, that was that. mainly from, uh, it was actually... I think from one of our podcast speakers, you know, suggested um, oh, that okay. you know Ahrefs was a good one. Um, so we we considered them, but it, it was much you know similar to a little bit of a turnoff with SEM Rush was um, there's this oh they just throw so much at you that mm-hmm. um, it you know I mean if you're looking to you know if if you if you can understand like everything that they're showing you right off the bat, well. You know, you probably have almost already made your decision yet, I would assume, but um, really kind of sculpting, you know, the, the, the demos to what, what we what we were looking for and what we needed uh, would have would have definitely helped their cause. Uh, but instead, it was just like, here's everything you can do. And you're you're taking all this in like in 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes max. And um, it was it was a lot. It was a lot of information. And, and I felt like they almost did a little bit of overkill there. Now you said your team was sitting in on this um, mm-hmm. at these demos, and and um, so when they and were they did they trial all three? Did you guys actually do a trial for all three, or did you not get that far with? We with did. The, I think we ended up doing a trial with SEO mods and um, SEM rush is what we okay. ended up at, and um, and we just liked the functioning. You know, at that point, it just what, what felt better to use. You know, what what actually was easier to to actually utilize at that point. Um, and that's, that's when we you know, made the final decision to go with SEO Moz. Yeah. Ease of use is, is such an interesting topic. It's one of my favorites. So talk to me a little bit about the kinds of use, you know, what did, what did you put the product through its paces with and where did you notice the differences in ease of use? Uh, see that's see that's a question where I would have to bring my CEO in because that's that th- this is at the point where you know I was in, heavily involved in the decision setting it up but then then I just you know went to my you know my team you know and asked you know how how was it you know here here are the things that we needed you know here's the information I know we need to get out of it how how did it how did it go for you you know so okay. I guess you know a key point you know in the marketing stuff for that I guess for the listeners would be to you know speak to you know when you're marketing don't just marketing to the to the founder and the the, the CEO economic or buyer but, but talk to the lead evaluator exactly. so we'll talk about that in just a minute if you want um one I want to state key stains your story for a minute ago though so David so when you when you talk to your team um and remind me again that was your COO and and what other I don't need to, names just what other roles were involved in this yeah, the, the, the fun, actually the the main the main people involved were myself and my CEO as far as um, okay. uh, as far as like the decision and the trial and, and deciding which one we're going with. Yes. You didn't have any other users working on the trial. No. No. Okay. So did did your COO was he was he she he completely um, completely clear that this was the right? I mean, were there any? But oh, if or boy, if but we do like that, or was it just one hundred percent SEO Moz? 
No, I mean there were some things that um, that some of the other tools went went uh, could go um, a little bit deeper on, but mm-hmm. um, again, it, it really didn't. It, it went you know so, so deep that it was you know it, it wasn't really a, a, mm-hmm. a, a an advantage for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, again, that's why I think some of those other tools might be really good for, for, for certain types of, you know, job roles and companies and such. But um, we, um, we, we just didn't, you know, it, it never really resonated with us. And, again, it may, maybe it's something we're missing, but um, in, in the gushing of information that was sent at us, it, you know, it could have been lost in, in trying to swallow all of that, you know. Right. So, yeah. um it, you know the the platform and, and what we ended up finding with SEO Moz was great. Now, granted, I wish they could go a little bit deeper on some things, like you know tracking keywords that are ranked past a certain amount that they offer. But um, you know, I guess you're never going to get you know one perfect tool. I guess so. There were some things that we wish could be a little bit better, but nothing that that hindered you know our you know what we're able to accomplish and and, and keep track of and. and Accomplish. I could. I didn't catch what you just said completely. Can you say more about that, David? Is the tracking keywords? There was one thing around tracking keywords. Yeah, right yeah. Now. Like SEO Moz doesn't go like past. At least that I'm looking at. Maybe I'm not using it correctly, but like past rankings of like 50 on on. Um, okay. At, you know, on key on SERP ranking, um, and it would be nice, you know, as you're getting going with like a new account that's not ranking at all, to to be able to track those a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that I wish could be a little bit different. Again, it could be something I'm maybe not using mm-hmm. correctly, but I've 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 delved into it. But but again, um, overall, it's it's satisfying what what we're needing um, with it, and when we. We also have some other partners that use some of these other tools that we can draw on if we have to if we have to go deeper on stuff. But overall, um, mm-hmm. but overall, you know, it, it you know it really came down to um, uh, speaking to to what we were looking for, which was on the local level. Um, in in addition, and again, I, I really think a ton of psychology played in this because I, I went into it almost like certain we were going to go with SEO Moz, and then. We then we stopped and did a ton of research, and um, like I said, they they lost the lead a little bit, but then they got it back once we ended up doing the demos and and, and looking at their their continuing focus on on the local aspect of everything. What, do you, what at the at that moment where you said it was kind of a psychological thing where they kind of lost the lead a little bit? What was that about at that moment? Well, tell me about. I that. don't know. I, I remember you know really pe- people. I, I think it might have been a few people in a row um, really singing the praises of of SEM Rush, and okay. but at the same time they never said anything negative about the others. But they just were saying this is the tool that I like. But okay. you know again. Um, that that could have just been what they were used to, so so that's when we stopped and really really you know took a lot of time because again it wasn't the cost that was a concern to us it was we're going to be using this and the last thing I need to do is put something in place that people are in, intimidated by and um, aren't aren't going to use it to its fullest. So Is people being your clients are your clients using this or no or no our our team our our team, team here okay. yeah okay yeah so it, it really. It ended up coming down to the clarity of what we were looking for, and, the, and um, just the ease of navigation and, and, and using the tool. And said, you know, it just it seems to be a, a lot easier to function that way. At least that was the appearance. Of course, I've never yeah. we didn't move forward with the other tools, um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe it's similar, but um, it didn't feel that way once you know once you look at everything. It was just. I really think this other companies, if they're listening, they really, you know, need to, you know, I, mean, I say that, but they're both very successful, so they're obviously doing some things right. But it just, it really felt like, um, it, you know, just too, too much info, and not a tailored, not not tailored information being sent to you with what, you know, with what you're looking for. And I have one final question, David. Was this actually the least expensive solution that you selected, or was it the most? Where did it fit in terms of the pricing? Uh, with the tag on with the Moz Local, it probably ended up being right in the middle, if not ended up spending a little bit more than the other tools just because mm-hmm. we ended up getting that add-on piece. So, um, you know, price ended up really not being too much of a factor. 
Did the other companies not even have a local tool? If they did, they didn't. Um, it didn't. It wasn't communicated, and um, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't highlighted. It wasn't at the forefront of, of what they were talking about, or any information that I had ever read on them. And when we, um, I, yeah, I'm pretty positive. I remember, you know, asking about it, and there just wasn't wasn't a lot of, um, you know, it was. It, it didn't seem to, to cater to that at all. And, and I think at the time, uh, SEO Moz was coming out with Moz Local. I don't. I think it might have been after that, and um, and that was intriguing to us as well. Well, David, I'm going to, in the interest of time, and, the, and I'm going to go ahead and end this interview right now. I think you've given us a ton of useful information, and I learned a lot. I uh, really appreciate your time on it. Let's. You want to spend a few minutes talking about the interview? And oh, 100%. That's what I was going to ask to do. Okay. Now, now yeah. let's see what pieces of information you took. Now, of course. Um, for all listeners, Adele suggests you do what, what about eight, anywhere from six to ten interviews. Is that is that about accurate? Yeah, we recommend at eight. Eight. We actually do ten for our clients when we do these studies, and okay. um, we would have recorded this interview. Uh, actually, we are recording it, and we would be then transcribing the interviews, and we'd be looking for patterns okay. across. And so the persona is built not from a single interview. But by doing this exact same interview with other people, we were just talking to the economic buyer. I'll mention that um, that there's really in a complex sale, there's two types of buyers. There's the economic buyer who makes the decision to invest in the category of solution and who also signs off on it. Mm -hmm. And then the other buyer is what we would call the lead evaluator. And okay. the lead evaluator is much closer to the actual uh, research and assessment on which options to consider. Now, because this is a small company and because – and David filled a couple of roles here, um, he actually did some of the research himself uh, in, a, in a bigger company um, or where there's multiple decision makers. We would tend to want to interview the lead evaluator. Because mm -hmm. that's the person who can go deep on yeah. comparing the different products and what stood out and what didn't. Um, so that's that's just one note. We usually when we talk to economic buyers, um, we'll blend those with some interviews with the lead evaluators just so we get all those insights. But then we're going to go look for patterns across the interviews, patterns around what we call our five rings of buying insight. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then that's how we build the persona. We pull out verbatim quotes. We'd want you to pull out quotes from this interview and that bring color to these points. And then you'd be looking for where, for instance, let's say we had three people who said that local SEO was a big requirement. We'd go pull out a quote from three different interviews talking about why local was so important or what was important about that. Or mm -hmm. we had three interviews where people talked about, you know, the, you know, being overwhelmed by the amount of information, and we pull out three quotes, three or four or five quotes related to that. And that's how we build the persona mm -hmm. is by looking for patterns around what was important. The trigger here, um, the priority initiative insight was around starting his agency. And mm -hmm. so, you know, at the beginning of the interview, we got him to talk, we got David to talk about how that what the trigger moment was, what, and so now we might have had three or four interviews where that was the priority initiative. Hey, I start an agency. I, I know one of the first tools I have to have is an SEO and keyword research tool. But then there might be other interviews where it was something else, um, mm -hmm. a particular client or something. And so we're looking for patterns around uh, the priority initiative, what triggers it, how the buyer defines success, what were their barriers to choosing us, let's say in this case maybe I was doing this work for SEO Moz. In that case, it would have been nice to have talked to the COO and get more detail on what they did like about the SEM Rush and some of the other tools. Um, mm -hmm. The decision criteria, we got some around that, not too much information around the local, around we probably would have spent more time with the COO on some of the tracking that they were he wanted to do with it, maybe get into more of those details. And then um, the buyer's journey represents the phases that he went through to make this decision and who was involved. So we're just going through these 10 interviews and pulling out all those quotes, organizing those 
quotes based on the key insights, and then that's your buyer persona. Awesome. Now, um, so do you you do suggest like you talk? You say you do ten interviews. Now, of those ten interviews, are those ten separate companies, or would you include uh, myself and then and then same company, the CEO who actually you know ended up That's doing ten, the trial? Ten separate companies. We ten separate get, companies. Yeah, we want to get with the buyer persona. We're trying to get an insight into how a market full of buyers thinks about the buying decision we want to influence. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and you know, people think ten's a small number, but it is interesting. We we ch- when we do research, we charge people by the number for each interview, and mm-hmm. so people sometimes pay us to do more than ten. And what we've discovered is is that those five insights after ten interviews, they don't change enough to make you get. There's a point of diminishing return in terms of the ner- new insights you get, mm-hmm. and. So 10 seems to be about the magic number, but you do want 10 different companies. Okay, and now, most but we... of our studies, we would either talk to the, C, to the lead evaluator or the economic buyer. We'd choose which persona we're going to build. Um, but, so that would, be, that would be unusual where we would talk to the same people. You know? To the same, you know, it's two people in the same company? Yeah, we wouldn't ever talk, talk to two people in the same company, but we would choose either the COO or the CEO in your case. Now, how would you go about uh, dealing with this for a company that, you know, did make a buying decision like we did where, you know, I took the lead on narrowing things down or, and I took the lead on, I guess, understanding that we needed this and then narrowing mm-hmm. it down and then bringing my team in to help with the final decision. Like, because those are obviously, you know, what caught my attention was on the marketing side. And then what actually caught, obviously, the CEO's attention was how, you know, the demos went and how the, you know, the, mm-hmm. you know, whatever questions he might have had at that time, how all that went. So it's kind of two, two separated type of two separate experience. Roles, yeah. Yeah. And we're, so where how, we how found that, that we'd, pop, we'd probably want to do six interviews with each of you, but in two in two in different companies. Oh, okay. So we, would, we wouldn't do – so we could do six interviews with the economic buyer and six interviews with the lead evaluator. But okay. In, but we wouldn't do them in the same company. Understood. Now – I uh, understand, you know, I'm only one person who did this. So, but let's assume that there were some patterns that were made that that were discovered. How, how, how could you pull out? A, let's just assume everybody said the exact same thing that I did. So, how how can you like what is you know as far as marketing messaging, you know, via you know online ads or ads like what 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 suggestion would you give for somebody, um, you know, uh, you know, an SEO and keyword research tool. Um, mm-hmm. what, what, what would well, you say, say they should do? I mean, one of, one of the key insights I got from my interview, and what's great about it is it's even if, even if there were other people that said similar things, they'd say them a little differently. And mm-hmm. so, I, so the, you know, I would never be stuck trying to build a strategy around the, with as, as, really, you know, as little information as you just provided, right? Not to mm-hmm. discredit what you did, David. But, like, the, the, there were two really key insights here that, if, that came out of this one interview, and um, one was the just really critical importance to make this seem like it's got a lot of useful information, but that it's very easy to, to assimilate that information. Mm-hmm. So you talked repeatedly around, you know, the sense that of being overwhelmed by the amount of information and perhaps the irrelevant information. Mm-hmm. and information that you deemed irrelevant. So I would be doubling down, you know, if I were SCM Rush listening to this interview and if maybe they were my client for this study and we had just interviewed you as a as someone that they didn't persuade, I would be um, focused on how do we, you know, make this how do we make sure that every step in the buyer's journey feeds them the appropriate amount of information. And maybe I'd have different personas for you, you sort of implied, David, that there might be a buyer out there who's looking for that information. I'd probably be wanting to segment the market and make sure that I had a demo that was more appropriate for your type of buyer persona versus the one who was looking for all that information. 
Yeah. Same thing for the people who lost you and never even got to that phase whose demos were too thin or videos were too thin. And we'd be looking at how do we build, um, you know, it's, it's entirely possible that those tools, and this isn't to make you feel bad about your decision, David, um, but it's entirely possible that those tools actually could address your needs, but mm -hmm. that the company hadn't invested properly in and doing that, you know, in those videos to make them display what you needed to know. Awesome. Now, um, talk a little bit about, you know, how you, you know, you started off with take me back to the day. Yep. And I believe that is where you start off all your interviews, if I'm not correct. Is that right? Correct. That's correct. Okay. Uh -huh. So that's the one thing, that's the one common thing that you do. Um, the one, you know, you just the starting point. Right. Then... Where was your strategy from? You know what you were, you know, trying, you know, looking to accomplish through the buyer persona. Like how, you know, I was. You I mean I'll just say, I mean, it felt supernatural. You know, everything you were doing. So it's hard yeah. for me to like pinpoint like what you were strategically doing, though. Yeah. So can you just talk about like strategically, like you 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 start sure. off with that to kind of get people there, and then you know, where you, where you went, you know, you know, yeah. from a tactical standpoint, I guess. Perfect, David. Yes, certainly. So, yes. Yeah, so it's meant to feel like a conversation and to get mm -hmm. the buyer just to, you know, warm up and tell a story. So that's good. It felt that way. If you listen back to this recording, you'll see that in the very beginning of the interview, you tried to answer the question around that I asked around what triggered your investment. And then you very quickly went through Every, the rest of your decision, you said, we really had one in mind from the beginning, and we went out and looked at all these other companies, but we chose one, and you went all the way to the end of your decision. And this is mm -hmm. what almost every person will do that you interview. And probably the biggest mistake that people make when they're new at these doing these interviews is that they assume that the interview's over. You know, they're kind of lost. So mm -hmm. if you listen back to this recording – You'll see that what I did is I, I didn't take the bait on asking you any questions related to your final choice, even though you'd already sort of brought that up and you were at the end of your story. I instead led you carefully back to the beginning of your story mm -hmm. by asking you some additional questions about that triggering moment. Oh, was, was this, how recent was this decision? Was it something mm -hmm. that you'd done? How, you know, was, oh, was this when you started your agency? Just making sure that I really understood what really that triggering moment was. Mm -hmm. And then you still started skipping ahead in your story again. You tried to go to the end, and I brought you back one more time. I said, now I want to go back to the time when you first decided that you needed these. And, you know, you probably knew about a couple of companies. Were those the only ones you considered, or did you actually do some research? And so mm -hmm. I kept bringing you back to the earliest part of your story where I didn't yet have sufficient insight. Mm -hmm. I kept taking you back to the earliest stage in your journey where I wanted you to elaborate. And I never asked you a probing question on anything until I got the earliest, earliest stage of your journey, until I got you to describe that in as much detail as you could. Gotcha. And that's the strategy. Okay. Okay, I know, and you did do that. <laughs> you, de you definitely did do that. You know, I I, uh, I, I noticed it without noticing it. You know, uh, yeah. and I, I felt you wrangling me back into you know trying to get some more information on those um, from decisions and what we what what exact research did I do? You know, what what caught yeah. my attention? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you start off there, and then just if you do have people go forward, just don't think it's over. Like keep going back yeah. until you get you get the information you're looking for. And in, in the in the key parts that you made sure that you cover almost like what what are some of the just the the bottom the basics that you have to come away from an interview in your opinion that you feel if it was successful would be what? So I want to know from their step what triggered the investment from the beginning, like what happened. Then mm -hmm. I want to know everything they did and thought about at each phase of the journey. The other trick I used there a little bit is I said, well, after you did your research, how many companies were you evaluating? And mm -hmm. what that does is it anchors you in the part of your story when you still had a number of companies in consideration. 
So what mm-hmm. I've, I'm doing there is, you know, in a complex sale, buyers do start with a triggering moment, and then they go and do research. And I want to flesh out everything they did, and I asked you a lot of questions about your research phase, you know, talking to your um, peers and what did they tell you and how did what they tell, told you influence who you decided to evaluate, right? Mm-hmm. And how did what you saw online influence what you decided to evaluate? So I want to get a whole picture of how you decided who to include in your consideration set. And then okay. I want to walk you in the part that you, you're, you weren't a part of as much, and so it was the thinnest part of this interview, is how you actually went through that in-depth assessment of each of those three companies. Yeah. So I, mm-hmm. I would want to capture that because that gets all your decision criteria. It gets into more detail about perceptions about each of the companies you evaluated. This can be a rich source of competitive insight. And it can also tell us how, in more, with more precision how SEM Rush and the other company were, was eliminated from consideration, which mm-hmm. would be because these are perceptions on your part, and you acknowledge this, is – it would have given us clues to give if SEM, if we were a marketer for SEM Rush, we'd get to see what we needed to do better in order to have one to win the kind of business from a type of buyer you are who's potentially overwhelmed by all the information we have. And mm-hmm. I even probed on the question about local. You know, that was another really important aspect of your decision criteria. And I asked you, you know, do they have that? So your perception is that they probably don't. But if they do, then we'd start to see in our marketing messages for those companies how we need to bring that information up front. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned you know you wanted to probe on each phase of the buying journey. You know, the buying journey you know can be broken down to three to five, and some people even will say twenty-five <laughs> stages. But when you in the for the purposes of this, are you mainly talking you know awareness, consideration, and buying, or what? What do you like? What what boxes do you need to check as far as what, what you're talking about there? That's such a great question, and and I I love that one. Da- Excuse me. I love that one, David, because. People do, we, when we label those, we try to label them based on words like you used. What we find is that once buyers have decided that they want to make this type of investment, it's really about the phase, how many companies they consider and how they begin to eliminate those. So when we're in what, the, what we would call the research, when your buyer's in the phase called a research phase, they're out there interviewing or considering the universe of options. Mm-hmm. Um, and we might ask people, you know, well, how many companies do you think you looked at online? And you, you kind of volunteered some of that. You said it might be 10 or 12. And then we say, well, what did you do next to, to eliminate your options? And at that point, that's where we get what the buyer describes as a step where they begin to eliminate people. So by, from buyer's perspectives, it's like a – we think of a sales funnel where we have, you know, 100 leads and then they become, you know, 50 suspects and then they become 20 prospects and we win five deals or whatever, terrible conversion rate. But um, for, for buyers, it's something quite similar to that where they start with, you know, 20 companies and then they narrow it to 10 and then they narrow it to four and then they narrow it to one. So those are – the real phases of the buyer's journey. And for the purposes of communication, we can put labels on those. We can call those research, you know, assess, um, evaluate, and and decide. It doesn't matter what we call them, but buyers don't think that way. They think, oh, we're going to go out there and we're going to begin to narrow this universe of options until we choose one. Yeah, and it almost sounds like you could s- simply, you know, have the three categories, awareness, consideration, and buying, and say, hey, you know, everything about awareness, you know, like how did you, you know, what did, what did you, and, and you know, stop me if I'm wrong here, but, you know, with the awareness, you need to figure out, you know, when they found out they needed a solution, you know, and then at the top of that, how did you even know 
who to even look into, you know, and then you get into consideration and then it's all those things like, well, who do you, con- who did you consider? Why did you consider? Okay. What did you consider about them? What did you like about them? So it almost feels like, you know, for the purposes of not overwhelming people who are going to be doing this, um, am I, am I kind of going down the right path there? If you do that and then just check these boxes off, you know, everything within awareness and, and then everything within the consideration from every, every single angle and just, get those answered, you know, um, yeah, everything. Yeah, but just be careful, though, that you don't, that you let the buyer's words be the source of your questions. Mm-hmm. And so while I was listening to you, I was writing down just three or four key words out of everything you said. Mm-hmm. So, like, I wrote down rabbit hole, and um, I wrote down not cost but mostly time, and I wrote down product videos and don't have walkthroughs because what instead of asking people questions like you just described, what I wanted to go back is what makes it feel like a conversation and a dialogue and gets people to open up and even get sometimes quite emotional about their choice is when instead of asking a question that I've scripted or written down or that I care about, I instead ask them to tell me more about something they said and I use mm. you your words as my question. Mm-hmm. So you're you're right that those are kind of the that and you know we do have a um a sort of a table in our training where we show people the sta- the five stages and kind of how to how to think of the interview in terms of those five stages. But the mm-hmm. reality is the more you can use the buyer's words to ask the next question, the more the person will interact with you like a human being like and and like somebody you know like it just feels open and ideally at the end of the interview people will say particularly when this is something they've just finished and they've spent you know six months trying to do this evaluation and as you said this is an important decision it's not about the cost it's about how this is going to affect your success as an agency Mm -hmm. and if I had interviewed you right after this was over, there would have been a yeah. l- even more emotion and passion in your voice around this. Oh, absolutely. And, and at the end of the interview, you'd been very likely to say to me what we hear all the time, gee, Adele, thank you so much. That was fun to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Adele, this was awesome. This is awesome. I, um, I, uh, I, you know, I, I'm really hoping we we gave people, you know, that's one thing reading and learning and all that, but then to kind of see you in action because, you know, you know, obviously this would have been a little bit better if I um, had, you know, more intimate, super duper details that I could have recalled. You know, it's been a while now, but. Um, that would have been great, but even without that, you could still see how you were digging for those answers in a way mm-hmm. that it make it very conversational and how you loop back. And, and I'm glad we gave some pointers like that because I can see these things ending short without you getting the information just because you're at the end on accident. Um, and yeah, so I, I think you really showed people your you know, your methodology and your skill with this. So greatly appreciate that. I, I, this has to be helpful to lots of people. Um, you know, it's, like I said, there's one thing reading it, and then there's one thing actually, you know, learning from a mentor where you actually see them in action. So uh, greatly appreciate it, Adele, and um, I uh, look forward to making sure everybody on our staff <laughs> listens to this, and we, we continue to get better in this area as well. Well, thank you for having me, David. It was really fun to chat with you today, and um, hoping that we have many more times to talk together soon.